What's up, assholes? It's your boy Sky again with part four of our Arcane tutorial series where we touch upon what I think is probably going to be the most important video in this tutorial series, and that is curse theory, right? So you're probably thinking, you know, what's, what's curse theory? You probably already have an idea. It's something like combo theory, right? Wrong. Not entirely wrong. Actually, you like almost half correct, right? So I think curse theory is more important for me to explain than combo theory. What curse theory is, is that it's understanding how to use your bugs, right? I know back in the day and probably still today, when people get cursed, they flail. God, do they flail. If you've ever fought an Arcane Online, they've probably flailed at least once, no matter how good they are. It happens. It happens, right? So. The flailing is just a demonstration of lack of proper understanding about how to use your bugs properly. And that's where Curse 3 comes in. To know what bugs to use, when to use them, how to how to use them most effectively. So it's important for another reason. Because understanding your bugs lets you invent your own curse settings, right? Instead of just following what everyone else does, you can make something yourself and bust it out at like the 11th hour your opponent never sees it coming and it's super cool and it's hype because it's like I've never seen this setup before and then you're like yeah I know bitch so you know it's just a little cool thing right so curse 3 is important because you have to have control over your bugs in curse or you'll never be a good arcane player ever right you can get to a certain point but you gotta control your bugs and when you control your bugs you understand your bugs you understand the setups and you can tweak them to your own preference or to your opponent's habits or you can just make up your own and that's one of the best feelings in the world so going 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 right into it right so how the bugs interact with the opponent you'll notice some bugs and like they behave differently right they don't behave the same right so you'll see the a bug the a bug sucks your opponent in and vacuums them forward not towards our case specifically because you can like forward dash and the a bug will still push them in the same direction right so it moves them forward so it's really cool for when your opponent's barrier blocking right so then you have the b bug which does nothing special it pushes back you know whatever c bug unlike the a bug moves them towards our this is this is a cf change that i think was like a really big deal because a lot of his setups in CP Extend weren't the most stable because it pushed them in the same direction. So for your cross ups, you have to more you have to more or less commit to your cross ups in CP Extend. Whereas in CF, your cross ups are less committal because they always go towards our clinic. So they're like they're a lot more stable, right? So then you have to debug nothing special pushes them back, right? Now, this, these are like all examples on block. Some of them behave the same on hit. Um, I know the debug on hit, like the opponent just goes towards the ground. They don't like move laterally, like at all. So, you know. But this is just, you know, a quick primer of how the bugs interact. So you, so when you learn how to control your bugs, these are things to be aware of. It's how you're it's how they interact with your opponent. Right? So now we're just gonna give like a quick example of curse theory, right? Like using the using the the BNA bugs. Right, so you can so you, you you can press 5A and you can um, summon bugs, right? So when you do that, you have to take advantage of your Gatlings to um to properly summon bugs without telling on yourself, you know. So just things to be aware of, you know, our connected Gatling is 5A to his 5B, but not 5A to his 2B. So you know you probably press 5A and 2B and bam you summoned the B bug your opponent probably wouldn't even know so just things to, to uh, be aware of uh, another thing to be aware of is um bug cooldown I didn't mention this in um in part one because I wanted to save it for a time where you can actually keep it in your head for when you start theorizing about you know your own curse setups and using your bugs every bug has cooldown so like as you can see they're different, right? The A bug has almost no cooldown, right? There is possible for like two A bugs to exist on the screen at a time, and that's pretty cool, you know. Um, the B bug has more cooldown, so now you see what the cooldown is. That after a bug is summoned, there's a time where the bug cannot be summoned again. You have to wait a while, and that's and that's what it is, right? So the B bug has some time where 
it's not going to come out, right? You have to wait for the cooldown to, to like resummon it. Sea Bug has more cooldown, right? Sea Bug pops out and it goes away, right? So like for, for that while, Sea Bug's not going to pop out again. Simple cooldown. Debug, I think in CP it had no cooldown, but since it had to travel up the screen, it felt like it had cooldown. But I'm pretty sure the second the debug goes off the screen, you, you can summon it again. But uh, I could be wrong again, they could have changed the frame data, but that's pretty much how it works. So so you have to be aware of bug cooldown as well. Because you know your curse setups can change as well as your combos can change depending on bug cooldown. So be super aware of that, right? Um, another thing to be aware of is how to use your bugs effectively mid-screen versus corner, right? So, you know, mid-screen is different. You'll probably have a lot of time to experiment with that by using the five bugs and certain four bugs and certain six bugs. I mean that as a, and as a way of summoning the bugs from different locations on the screen because you can do that. I don't know if I mentioned it. If I didn't, I'm sorry. But, um, you, you have a lot of time experimenting with that. In the corner, you'll probably always summon six bugs. And a good way to do that is, is again, to take advantage of your revolver actions, or your Gatlings, as I, as I call them, to properly summon them without telling on yourself, right? After a while, you'll probably just, get, you'll probably get used to it and be able to summon whatever at any time you want and do your own sick curse setup, and it's really super cool. So, that's pretty much it, right? I'm, I'm going to go over one more time that proper implementation of Curse Theory can allow you, the player, to have full control during Curse. From using bugs to pressure, to using Curse setups, and even setting up Curse OP. And that's it, right? So, super short video. I know part one dragged on for like years, but we're not going to go through that again. So that's the end of Curse Theory. I'll see you in part five where I'm going to show you a lot of really cool stuff like curse setups. And um, I'll see you then, guys. Bye.